Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Mr. Gill and today we're talking about hacking the classroom a little bit. Hacking. Not really. I'm just modifying it to my taste. So I have these child size workbenches here. I'm going to wheel one over and take, let me take a gander over it. Oh yeah, it wheels now. So here's what I had to do to make it wheel. Uh, first of all, why put a workbench on wheels? Because now it's shareable. When I first came here three years ago to the Reggio Inspired program at Meadowbrook, I had inherited a lot of the hand tools and workbenches because the other teachers said they weren't making effective use of them and I thought, cool, I'll use them. So let me take you a quick walk around here. So here's the workbench here. Uh, notice it doesn't have a woodworking vise on that one but it does have a drawer and I've got like sandpaper in the drawer right there. And it's already got lots of nice little scuff marks on it because it's supposed to because it's a workbench. Here's workbench number two where I was cutting some wood blocks out of just some, I don't know, what is that? One by, one by four, one by three. And uh, even have my carpenter's pencil, metal ruler. What did I cut it with? <laughs> this. Why? Because I already had it. Uh, James, shouldn't you use a circular saw? Yeah, I didn't have that. I also have like a corded drill that has one speed, uh, which is super fast. And I didn't want to use that. So I brought my so nice Makita drills from home. Oh, I love these guys. Oh, it smells like brushless motor. I don't know if it's brushless or not. I don't care. But I have a drill and driver. If you can get a drill and driver, I really recommend that you get a drill and driver combo with like a ch uh, like a, a clutch on here so it doesn't like overspin stuff. Um, has these belt hooks on here, so that's super handy. <sighs> Buy a good pair. You'll even if you're not a contractor, get get as good a pair of that as you can, because man, so worth it. Um, oh, what's that over here? What do we have over here? Could it be a third workbench? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. This one has wood vise. Oh, my hair's all kind of flat right now and sweaty. It's because I've been driving my table around so much now. So why put it on wheels? Well, now I can bring all woodworking tables to one area. I can run one power bar and power here if I needed to power something like a hot glue gun station because yes, I will let students use hot glue guns under my watchful eye and supervision. I could have one, two, three stations and I could be watching all three stations at the same time. Uh, I could bring all the locations here um, for tool use. One could be a cutting station, one could be a hammering station, one could be a drill station. You could be asking me, oh my God, Mr. Gill, are you gonna let children use a power drill? No, of course not. I'm going to let them use, oh, prepare to be amazed, vintage Stanley, still with the price tag on it, from Builder's World. Paint on it and everything still for this hand crank drill. Made in the USA. Says so right on the drill. Look at this thing right here. So just got to gotta undo the bit here. Tighten it up. Put your drill bit in there, tighten it up. There we go. And then this thing will drill a hole just fine. What if you wanted to buy one of these and this wasn't readily available on Amazon? They've got a ton of this kind here, a pistol grip drill, usually made by, <laughs> sorry, usually made by Fiskars. This is only okay. This is the weakness. This uh, little knurled knob here, this knob comes loose a lot. So when you're cranking, it's not great. It's not, it's just not. It's better than nothing. Now, what you gotta be careful of though, um, gotta hold the handle in place and you gotta undo the, the chuck, I guess, like this. Is that how I do it? Uh, I gotta grip the little bottom washer and then loosen it off and then... What did I do here? I'll figure it out later. I don't like them. Okay. Love these. 
can't find them anymore. So, um, should you have workbenches in your classroom? Yes, or what I call a sacrificial table. You need, because, well, my classroom's called the workshop, but this is an era. That's better. This is an era where we got to get our kids building stuff and using tools and making mistakes and getting messy because, well, especially in Canada, we are a small population in a big country with a lot of resources. Now, as it gets more expensive to ship things from one place to another because fuel costs go up, the kids that grow into the adults that can make the things they need and make them here mean that they don't wait or rely on other people, right? And if, if you, and you could call that like vertical integration, you could call that supply chain. I call it good education. So uh, this year we're committed to having kids make more stuff. I'm going to go put some more wheels on. Oh, uh, tip for you. What if you want to put wheels on a workbench? Here's how you do it. What if you want to do it yourself? Here's how you do it. Step one, flip workbench over like that. Step two, you're going to need some wheels. So I went with, I think, what are these? Two inch casters? I think they're two inch caster wheels. The set that is not at the end of the woodworking vise, because the kids will clamp stuff in there and saw it. I don't want them to have like a, a pivoting wheel under the vise where they saw stuff or clamp stuff down or work on it with a, with a file or something like that or a saw. Um, you put the, those wheels on the other end. Under the, underneath the end that's got your woodworking vise, if you, if you got something, you put these fixed wheels. And if you're sawing this way, you put the wheels this way so it's perpendicular to the force of the saw. That's right, perpendicular. Word of the day for you too. Man, you're getting value in this video. Now, in this workbench, the wheels were too big. It's not going to work. So I used whatever wood I had in my classroom, which was these uh, really cheap pieces of like fur, I guess. And I cut them five centimeter pieces. There you go. Now here's, the, here's what I had to do. First, I had to get this over top. First, I had to knock my tablet over. I had to get them over the top, clamp them down, drive, drill two holes in there, drill one hole, drive a screw, drill another hole, drive a screw, pinned it down two two pieces, uh, two screws that way. Then I had to really countersink them in, um, which I did because I pre-drilled. I could just go, I could just use the impact on my driver, just go brrr, a little more. If you had to get a bigger bit and make the hole a little bit bigger at the top so you could sink the screw head in, I use those kind of cone-shaped screw heads and just sink them in, just countersink them somehow, okay? Just muscle it somehow, maybe. I don't know. And then, uh, get my pencil. Zip, 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 zip. Just throwing stuff everywhere. All right? Now, ha, huh, what if these pieces aren't perfectly square? And what if you can't get them perfectly square on here? Well, then you just line the edge of this square piece up and, or the, uh, the little uh, injection molding line here of the wheel up and you eyeball it and you try and get it to be parallel to the leg or to this grain in the wood here or the edge of the, the edge of the table there. Just make sure that the wheels are like, dude, it only has to be close. Because like, as long as it's not like really like that, then you don't have what I call bad shopping cart effect. So anyways, I'm super stoked. I'm super stoked for the start of the school year and I'm going to get my kids building stuff. Um, what are we going to build? I don't know. I have no idea. It'll have to do with our inquiry and we're going to have to figure that out. And first we're going to have to get to know each other. So I know there's teachers all over my district who are busy in their classrooms planning stuff right now. Gosh, my hair is all sweaty and everywhere. And I even have a friend, a good friend, who has planned their lessons and done photocopying all the way up to uh, the end of December, which may leave room for inquiry, but it may not. I appreciate the feeling of being prepared, but 
having everything made and planned that far in advance where everything is set in stone and photocopied and ready to go, mm, maybe that's a little too one size fits all and maybe that's not what a modern Canada needs in education. So, and that's my thoughtful moment of the day. I'm gonna go back to making sawdust and noise. Or I'll see you later. And as always, uh, you're welcome to visit my classroom anytime. Good luck.